Pastor Launch. Now, Memani spoke about his own personal journey. He started his speech by his by personalizing, you know, his approach and speaking in um, speaking about his his family's hopes and his family's disillusionment with the liberation movement, and and therefore he's offering us the DA as a, a viable alternative. So, do they have a real plan? Do you think you know when 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 we speak about zero tolerance for corruption this is this is their tagline at the moment zero tolerance for corruption and he wants to tackle corruption do they have a plan well number one i mean th th their their theme really it's um, it's an agenda for reform um i've been i've been arguing and saying for, for a while now that most of the organizations even political organizations they really use reforms more than transformation yes there is a difference between reforming and transforming when you reform you are taking something that exists already and you just renovate it you you, you scratch on the surface you don't go deep when you transform it's a complete a complete metamorphosis. You start afresh, you know. So I'm yet to see the organization that will go for total and complete transformation, uh, that will go for, for complete uh, uh, metamorphosis, which start from scratch, mm. not just, you know, scratching from the, the surface. So an agenda to reform, yes, let's take whatever that is there, let's reform it. Uh, and let's just renovate it and yes. makes it uh, new or fresh or better. It has been it, uh, very good. I like the way he's done it, you know, uh, starting with personal journey, uh, using and involving his, 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 his parents and his families. Uh, that was very touching, you know. Uh, he shows that he really wants to, he's a caring leader, a leader full of compassion. Uh, he wants to to, to touch people's hearts. But what I found that is very striking and very, uh, that is very uh, exciting and striking for me in the, uh, uh, the manifesto. He mostly uses the I, 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 the, the first person, uh, first person yeah. you know, compared to your, uh, your ANC, which is more collective. Yeah. We will we do will this. Do we yeah. will, if you read this, the, 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 the manifesto, you will see a lot of I. I will do this. Yeah. I will do the South Africa. Will you uh, come yeah. with me? Will you, will you me? join me yeah. on this journey? Yeah. Uh, he is using your, 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 your American style, your, yes. your Trump style. I that th I'm the one who's doing it, you know. Yeah. Uh, whereas more in South Africa, it has been we will. When you look at the EFF, your, your, your ANC and yes. other organizations, they've been more the collective yeah. leadership. We'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just tell our viewers exactly what, let's just give them a, give them a recap. Yeah. So DA leader Musi Maimani has uh, just addressed thousands of party supporters as the party launched its election manifesto at the Rand Stadium in Johannesburg. The Manifesto for Change, One South Africa for All, is anchored on three pillars, including economic growth and jobs now, building a caring and opportunity-rich South Africa, as well as creating the capable state. The DA says it is ready to govern South Africa, and his readiness will be reflected in the manifesto. Maimani says, although they celebrate the struggle icons, the party must also celebrate the everyday heroes, ordinary South Africans who struggle to survive every day. This is not the South Africa we want. I'm here to declare today, enough is enough. Genoeg is genoeg. We need change and we need it now. We need change and we, we need it now. Fellow South Africans, this is not the future my father and fathers from his generation spoke about. I have spoken to more and more people who tell me the same story. They say they were forced to accept the hard truth that things could not change in our country in this, with this government. Because they all keep thinking maybe the ANC will change. Hey, Erkoblele, ANC I don't Corruption is not any more money. But you know what's true? Is that it's hard to admit this. When you have to turn away from a party that has liberated you, it's hard. 
it feels like giving up a family member. But when that family member threatens the future of your children, you don't have a choice, but you need change and you need to make a tough decision because we need change and we need it now. Well, we're joined in our studio by leadership expert, Dr. Mazwi Majola. Uh, Dr. Majola, let's continue to talk about the DA's manifesto launch. Now, what is the future of the DA? You know, compared to, 19, uh, to, to 2014, they captured 22% of the vote. What are their chances in 2019? Well, starting from 2009, uh, in 2009, they, 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 they scored um, uh, about 16%. And, and it was during Helen Zilla's time as a leader. And they did very well in 2014. Uh, they improved, they gained um, uh, about more than a million votes, about 1.1 million, to about 22% in 2014. Yeah. And again, it was still Helen Zilla that was a leader there. Yeah. Now, my money took over, I think on the 10th May 2015, so you can see that this is his first general election. That is his maiden general election. So this is going to be a baptism of fire for him. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did very well in 2016 on the local governments, but now we are talking about national general uh, election. Uh, they do have a potential to improve, but also they do have some challenges. Number one, in the Western Cape, Western Cape is going to post a lot and a huge challenge with uh, the emergence of good, which is, uh, is run, formed and run by Patricia DeLille. Patricia DeLille would like to prove a point. And it's very interesting that good has opted to, to, to make Patricia DeLille as a, a prima candidate for Western Cape instead of a national, uh, what, in, instead position. of, exactly, position. Nice position. So, uh, and, and I love that because it means that they, they are realistic. They are re I mean, they, they, they see that, let's, let's focus where, let's focus on where we can do better. They see the gap in Western Cape and they say, let us go and fight for Western Cape. So, DA is going to have a serious problem in Western Cape. I know that they think they are going to do very well in Houting. They might improve a little bit, but remember that they are not contesting against Zuma anymore. They are contesting against uh, um, Ramaphosa, yes. who is coming with new, fresh and, nov oh, and novel ideas. Uh, ideas. And there are other parties as well that mm. uh, 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 th they've just emerged. So they will improve, but they, it's going to be steep. It's going to be steep. This is not an easy ride for them. Now, we'll just have to leave it there for a moment. We're going to say goodbye to our SABC2 viewers. And we'll say goodbye to our SABC2 viewers. We'll take a short break and we'll be back right after this. Well, we're unpacking the DA's election manifesto and also discussing in studio today, we have our leadership expert, Dr. Mazvi Majola, who's joined me here. And let us, let's, let's look at, the, the, you, you spoke about some of the challenges that the DA faces in this upcoming elections. And there are challenges that have emerged um, between 2014 and now. Uh, there, also, there is also a new leader. So, and, and you mentioned, you know, uh, and, and you pointed out quite rightly that part of his manifesto presentation today focused on the I, you know, join me, I will do the following for you. Um, to to how successful would that strategy be for them as a party? Because you have a leader who is clearly becoming, uh, you know, sta who, who is standing out mm -hmm. above yeah. the party and placing himself as the sole um, liberator that the country requires. Yeah, I think he's copying, the, as I'm saying, he's copying the Western uh, approach, your, your American approach. Uh, when, when, when Donald Trump and others, whenever they campaign, they use the eye. It's like the voters want to know that what are you going to do for us? Because there, the voters, I mean, vote uh, the president directly, yes. you know. But now in South Africa, the system is different. And, 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 and I don't think it's wise, really. So he sees himself as the president-elect. 
Well, but also the, the, the way he personalizes it, it's like, uh, uh, if you are with me, I will do, can you join me? It's more about him. Yeah. It's not about us. It's party. not like, it's not about, if you join us, we will deliver, we will do this thing. Now, in leadership, whenever you, you personalize things a lot, Yes. Uh, it creates distance yes. uh, from people because it's like uh, you are the person and you look like uh, the, the most I uh, indispensable and most important person. Uh, this Messiah is going to deliver things. Therefore, let's look at you uh, doing that. I hope the DA voters will understand this approach or will understand this style or uh, but what about others that he's trying to woo to to da so i found yes. it uh, surprising that he's really using that approach a uh, uh, leadership approach instead of more collective uh, uh, style yes. <coughs> what about other challenges there are other parties that have that have emerged in the last eight or nine years um and 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 grown in strength and also uh, taken on the role of the opposition has this not diluted the DA's manifesto and the DA's approach towards their uh, to, uh, towards the election it has 2014 uh, the DA got 22 uh, percent that was around about four four million votes that they got um, EFF had just been formed a few months before the elections, yet they managed to get a, a 1.1 something million. Mm. So you can see that they, they've done well. And the question is, uh, what is going to happen now? Because at least uh, people know about EFF now. Exactly. EFF has really uh, uh, announced themselves, entrenched themselves, showed and exhibited uh, themselves to the people to say, here we are. And also there are other uh, many parties that have just proliferated. Mm. Uh, you talk about good, you're talking about uh, uh, all others, ATM, you're talking about AC, is it, uh, is it ACM as well? Exactly. There are so yes. many There's other a number of, uh, a number of I want to talk to you coming. just now about the dynamics of coalitions, but before yeah. we go to that, yes. let's just talk a little. We had the other party, the APC, yes. uh, with Temba Godi as the leader, uh, also delivering their manifesto today. So let's just look at, let's just look at that. Yeah. We want to ensure that there is an improvement in the provision of basic services like roads, electricity, education health and all the basic facilities that our people need we as the apc want to make sure that all the roads that lead to where our people live they must be tarred we want to make sure that akuna munu in our country who lives without electricity everyone should have electricity because electricity is the basis of development is the basis of progress but we are aware could the state company escom is falling apart and it is falling apart because of the corruption of the ruling party escom today owes more than 400 billion rands and they don't have that money to pay back that debt and on top of that escom has been settled with these illegal IPPs, which weigh down on the balance sheet of ESCO. As the APC would want to reverse these IPPs because they don't serve the national interest, they serve the interest of a few very powerful people within the ruling party. As the APC, we are opposed to the IPPs that were signed by Minister Jeff Hatte. There is no economy in the world that is powered by renewable energy. Even Germany is only thinking of considering the move away from coal in 2038. And Poland is thinking around 2045. Why should our country be settled with this burden when we are a very small economy in, in the context of international trade? We in the APC believe that the provision of energy needs a combination. Whether you have renewable, you have coal, you also should have nuclear 
because it is the least expensive of them all. We believe that nuclear is an option that should be looked at. The Halubalu against nuclear was funded by the owners of the IPPs because they wanted the IPPs to win, not because there is a proper intellectual conscient argument against nuclear. Leader of the APC, Temba Godi, speaking about his party's manifesto. Let's look at another party that launched their manifesto, the UCDP, right now. Coming to you from outside uh, the Khanyisa Community Hall here in the Gakhisano Molopo local municipality in the northwest, where we are covering for you the launch of uh, the UCDP's manifesto. And um, the UCDP in full stands for the United Christian Democratic Party. This is uh, one of the minor parties in the country, and um, this particular party draws uh, much of its support from here, the northwest, and of of course, the history behind uh, this party makes absolute sense. It was launched in 1977 by then uh, leader of the Buputatswana homeland in that day, Lucas Mangope. And um, fast forward to 2019, UCDP is still standing and they are saying as the country prepares for the elections which are expected to be held in May this year, that um, they are ready to tell their supporters or their members about uh, the party's policies and also um, the key areas or priorities areas that they will focus on once they take over government after the elections and uh, to hear more on this we're going to speak uh, to the party's uh, president and Dade Mudiri Suhume and um, he will bring us up to speed about all of those important uh, issues and Dade Suhume please uh, tell us if the UCDP takes over government what are your key priority areas? Well thank you and uh, greetings to the uh, listeners at home Yes, indeed, today is the launch of the United Christian Democratic Party. Uh, the most important part and the most essential elements of our party has always been discipline. We are a party that is grounded on Christianity, that is grounded on discipline, that is grounded on moral integrity. And those are the basics. You can have whatever policies you have. If you do not have as a party, collective, the discipline, the integrity and the morality to can lead a people, you cannot go anywhere. We are a party that is grounded on success. We have, we have created massive, massive infrastructural developments throughout the country and we don't have to tell anybody. They are there for anybody to see. So that is why. The United Christian Democratic Party will be contesting the 2019 election. It will be, it is launching the manifesto today and we are saying we are a national party. We have a national footprint. We are bigger than the Northwest. Yes, we have a strong base in the Northwest, but we are taking ourselves further. We are becoming a national party. Thank you. Mm. And then in, in your view uh, as the UCDP, when you look at South Africa today, what do you think is lagging in terms of governance? The primary problem is political correctness. We do not have leaders that speak with conviction. We have leaders that are primarily focused on careerism, on patriotism, and all these irrelevant issues. The bottom line should be discipline, discipline, and discipline. A disciplined society is able to take advantage of good education. It is able to educate its children. It is able to create jobs. And that is the basis of the United Christian Democratic Party. Thank you. And, and that is um, just one thing. Um, corruption in the country, in South Africa, really is a... Uh, a serious issue and um, how would you address such an issue perhaps consequence management once you do not punish corrupt senior officials or politicians you will never get it right start at the top and let leaders take accountability let an independent judiciary make them account and on that you will have a very successful society. Thank you. Okay, and then also, um, lastly, tell us um, how confident are you that um, you will win? I'm not sure how many provinces you are targeting for these elections, but tell us um, your confidence about winning um, during these elections. Thank you. Our immediate term goals is to take over the Northwest. 
and we are going to be an official opposition in the Northern Cape. We are going to surprise a lot of people in Gauteng. Limpopo is calling us. We are opening branches throughout the country. The excitement is mind-boggling. So we are indeed a player in the South African political discourse. And by all means, we are there. We are not going anywhere. Well, thank you very much. There you have it. That was uh, the president of uh, the UCDP, Ndade Mudiri Suhume, telling us that uh, they, as uh, the UCDP, are absolutely confident that um, they will win over the Northwest come elections. And they are saying that they have picked up that uh, the major issue in South Africa, the major challenge is political correctness and not dealing decisively with the corruption, which is one of the things that they will make sure they do differently and also so um, implementing integrity in government.